Welcome to It's History in 360 Degrees. This is a very special video. You will want to see Anthony Perrin's summary of the Nazi train bunkers before you go on this expedition with me today. For those of you who are new to 360 Degrees, if you have a mobile device, you can do your own exploration by moving the phone around. Uh, YouTube itself should have some arrows to help you associate uh, movement. Anyhow, we are at a Nazi train bunker in southern Poland. This was built during the occupation of the Second World War. If you pan forward, you will see a clearing, and this is where train tracks once would have led Nazi armored trains into their protective bunker. Things have changed since then, but there are photos from the time period and from the location I'm standing in now of Hitler meeting with Mussolini in basically this exact spot. So if you pan around, you'll get a small imagination of what the world may have looked like through his very, very sick eyes. Uh, Hitler made two trips to this bunker and it is massive. Later in the video, we will do an exterior uh, tour, so we will actually walk the entire half kilometer distance, but uh, just a little sneak preview. But there are some trees and a lot of moss growing uh, above this structure, and that is because there are so many such bunkers throughout Poland. Well, not train bunkers, there are only a few of those, uh, but there are so many bunkers that maintaining all of them would be highly exhaustive and counterproductive to the state's budget. So now we are actually entering the bunker, and here you can see massive closable doors that would be used to protect the trains of statement during an attack. I, I do not believe they were ever necessary, but everything was prepared for the worst case scenario. Now these walls around me are approximately seven feet thick. So for the technology of the time, this was for all practical purposes, bomb proof. It would be very, very hard to infiltrate. Excuse me, I can't speak. It would be very, very difficult to infiltrate, infiltrate this structure. Uh, at this table here, if you, if, if you pan the camera forward, you will see that famous picture of Hitler meeting with Mussolini. Now it's assumed that this was a little bit more camouflage. It seems that there was a wooden platform. And uh, this meeting took place in August of 1941. The structure itself was built by the hands of slaves. And for all the things Nazis get a bad reputation about, I think the slave driving and the looting, this is kind of uh, one of the things that shows the greatest weakness in their character. You know, they, they were completely self-centered and willing to gain at everyone else's expense. And if, you can, if you pan the camera forward now, you'll actually see an aerial picture of this bunker, give you an idea for just how long it is. And again, we're going to actually walk that a little bit later in this video. Now, the bunker itself was outfitted with a technical infrastructure. There is a very decrepit building on private property not far from here that unfortunately we can't access, but that's where the power plant and most of the tools necessary to actually run this bunker would have been. You can see here are kind of side escape chambers. Uh, so if an air raid were to be happening, the uh, soldiers, they could bunker down extra hard in this area. We still have leftover remnants of the air filtration system. Here, if you pan in front, you'll see another one. This environment is very dark. There's almost a mist in here. If you just look straight down this tunnel, you'll see the thickness of the air. You'll feel the, the creepiness of the place. And although this is abandoned, for many years, I would argue that it was probably never much friendlier feeling. I doubt that the air ever smells 
nicer than it does today. Military bunkers are purely pragmatic. I was speaking with a soldier once, and he explained to me that soldiers don't fight with honor, they fight to accomplish their mission. So if that means you kill someone, you, you don't do it necessarily in an honorable way. You do it in the way that makes them dead the most effectively and the, and the most rapidly. Military infrastructure in general, from the places that I've visited, set out to achieve the same pragmatic effect. So this building, built in the hands of slaves, should protect you and your train from being bombed. And it's not a place to be cozy, it's not a place to feel good, nothing like that. Here there's a small piece of what I believe will be an exhibition. You can pan to your right or to your left, and you'll actually find the relics of train tracks and the fittings for the train tracks that were removed. They were removed during the communist period of Poland's history, so after the war, when this space was converted into a mushroom factory. It uh, might sound strange, but again, the country was in ruins, so kind of any structure that you had available to you at the time was of great value. And people forget that in Western Europe, the Allies were making efforts to rebuild. Those lands were flattened as well. But uh, I'm curious if there was a type of desperation that required for people to put factories in the bunkers, things of that nature. So these side chambers, as you go further, you find that the space is more and more flooded, humid, wet, muddy even, and uh, yeah, it makes an impression. I visited another such bunker in a completely different part of the country, and it was And it was completely flooded. Couldn't even pass through it. Again, these monuments are difficult to maintain. They're huge. You would really need millions to upkeep this in perfect condition. Time. Time has its way, for sure. You can see some of the sub-infrastructure. Wow, now if you pan down, You'll see some of the piping where the utilities would have run inside of this bunker. There is more to it than meets the eye. So, what's your impression? Is this okay? My impression is like less air here and like to breathe. Yeah. Is that only my impression? No, it's definitely my impression as well. It would make sense because this would have been sealed off. Do you know what happened to the train tracks? What? I was, I was actually wondering about that. This was used as a mushroom processing mushroom place processing. after the war. And you can see that the floor is getting muddy here, uh -huh. where it probably floods. So they just reassembled the tracks? Yeah, and they found a utility for it. And as weird as that is, I almost wonder if it's better because now the purpose of this is to serve as a museum, but it's going to be expensive to maintain. Look at that, just like flooded chamber after flooded chamber. Do we look in that one? Sure. Yeah. Look at that. So, what was the purpose of these chambers? I don't know for certain, but I think that this would have been a place to, like, literally bunker down. You know, last time I was here, I wasn't, I don't think I was able to walk this far because it was completely flooded. And maybe in this place, we get a little bit of feeling for the fact that there were once tracks laid down. Yeah, you can see it's, it's reinforced. Those were train tracks. Well, maybe not the tracks, but the reinforcements to hold the train. It's 
pretty imposing, right? Well, the gender seems like slightly Beyonce. Uh, yeah, it's very spooky. The, light, the other one I was in in the other part of Poland didn't have any lights. Okay, and up here, looks like we're going out. Ah, not so fast. So yeah, I believe that I was once on that side, and that there's actually more infrastructure to this. But considering the steel gate, it seems we're not going anywhere anytime soon. Picking off where we left off at the end of this train bunker, we'll take a moment to explore the outsides here a little bit. Well, this bunker is deep in the Polish village. I just want to emphasize, this is very, very much in the total middle of nowhere. You can see that there's effectively forest just growing right into the, the bunker itself. And one of the strange factors here is that the bunker is rather curved. You notice that uh, it's angled at times, which for some reason seems unintuitive to me. You know, you, you would think that a train bunker would just pull in, just straight line. I guess it must be level on the inside. But from this perspective, the ground around it, all the hills around us, leaves me with the impression that, you know, this is generally not a level area. So the ingenuity to build a bunker like this must have taken immense planning. You don't often think about that. It's one thing to look at this and say, well, my God, it's mammoth and it's in the middle of nowhere. It's another thing to consider that this huge work was built with slaves. But then when you think about the ingenuity that went into this, the planning, the mathematics, the concept even, it really, really makes you wonder. I've, I've said some unpopular things with regards to Nazis. Uh, on one trip to Berlin, when I visited uh, some remnants of a bomb church, it occurred to me that in some way there were German people who were also victims of the war. I mean, they didn't necessarily want their country to go on this campaign. Some people did, but there are just normal everyday citizens, everyday people who couldn't give a shit about bunkers like this, wouldn't want to finance it, certainly wouldn't want to, you know, catch slaves and make slaves build something like this. But then on the flip side, there are high IQ types, right, that believe in a mission, they believe in a vision to the point that they could justify this kind of ingenuity at the hands of slaves. And for a purpose that would really not benefit the majority of society. And there's a lot of talk these days about minorities and majorities. I would argue that the Nazis, they did not have the majority of people at heart by any means. They had their own sick visions, their own egos uh, in their hearts. I mean, you think about it, even if they paid proper laborers to build this, they would have done so with stolen money. They were looting. In Poland, there is a legend about a gold train. A lot of people believe that there was a train loaded up with loot that didn't make it out of the territory and it was hidden somewhere in Lower Silesia. You see something like this, and I almost can't help but believe that it would be a possibility. The, the sophistication of the evils that the Nazis committed themselves to, it becomes really, really apparent when you visit something like this. I've been to Auschwitz, Birkenau, and that's a moving place, that's a touching place. This is a bunker in the middle of a field that very few people know about that was intended to accommodate an entire train. Probably the most scary factor is that I can make a whole channel just dedicated to bunkers such as this. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. That's 
some dudes partying here. And you know, you have people who would be mad at those guys for drinking beers next to this bunker. But I don't take it as a sacramental site one way or another. In fact, you know, I heard about the video of Auschwitz victims coming back to Auschwitz and, and dancing there. Very controversial. And uh, I wouldn't encourage something like that, but you know, th there's another way to look at it that you take the seriousness and, and dignity away from something that was intended to dominate huge sloths of people. Well, that kind of sacrilege might be okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, if you did, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you'd like to see more 360 degree explorations, and uh, check out Anthony's video about the Nazi bunkers, so you get a more thorough history about what we're seeing here. I think it's important.